All right, welcome back to the Real Estate Huddle. We're on episode 36, and we are gonna tell you all about the worst experiences we've ever had working across from a, another realtor. We're not gonna mention any names. We love realtors, by the way, because we are realtors. Uh, we don't wanna dog on uh, realtors in general by any means. Uh, just wanna make that clear. Like, um, We think that what we provide and what other great agents provide is, is an amazing service, and we truly you know, believe in that. Um, but man, every now and then you run into uh, a challenge, right? And, and someone who just has their, their head on a little crooked maybe <laughs> or just like um, you run into them after having a bad day or something like that. So there's always experiences that are interesting in the real estate business. And maybe you'll find this this interesting as we talk through some of the real life experiences that we've had without mentioning any, any names to not be disrespectful. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll kind of open up to you guys. What are, what are some of the things I think combined experience like in this room, we've got plus 30 years and, and uh, uh, more than that. And so there's, there's been a lot of transactions here, probably you know, eight, 850 plus transactions as well. So we've, we've had a lot of experience in this space. And every time you do a deal, usually you're working with another agent alongside or across from you, right. That's representing the other party. And so, um, you run into some funny things. So what are some of the things that you guys have come across as you've, as you've been my doing most this? Interesting deal was my first one ever, mm-hmm. uh, working with a client and buying a town home and, mm-hmm. uh, It was very interesting because the listing agent Mm -hmm. was the actual owner of the property and we did an offer, negotiated, did all that and then we went through inspection and the inspection report came back and it was, the HVAC system was uh, less than stellar in their performance. So Mm -hmm. had cracked heat exchanger, I I believe it was a cracked heat exchanger, Uh, the electrical panel was uh, one that was recalled, Um, just had a myriad of different things. So, um, but turns out the property was listed with central air and uh, upon inspection there was no central air located in the property so to so advertise and market it in the mls with yep, central yep, ac with central air conditioning yeah we were looking at it in i think it was in february time frame so air conditioning wasn't on oops um, so yeah didn't didn't think much of it we're kind of going through it and we're like hey th- there's there's something to miss here so, and then with the uh, furnace having, you know, COT leak, I think it was a cracked heat exchanger. So had other issues with that. And now that was a, ma- a major finding in the inspection report as well as the electrical panel. So mm-hmm. went back to negotiate and uh, the agent on the other end of the line was uh, a, a very large, uh, very boisterous person, <laughs> uh, very intimidating and uh, is known in the community for some other things as well. And uh, it was, um, very, very comical, uh, very intimidating for me. Like Cause you're such a small guy. Yeah. yeah I, I'm such a small guy <laughs> walking into this, uh, first transaction going, Oh boy, is this how they all go? Is like, is this, is this what, you know, I, I was very fearful and, uh, you know, had some good coaching from Landon and, uh, was able to work through it. And, uh, turns out we were able to get through and get a new HVAC system, a central air installed and a new electrical panel yeah. um, to get all of this uh, tidied up before closing and uh, worked out really well. But uh, yeah, it was an air on the listing side and he had no one to blame because he was the owner of the property as well, but he had had it as a rental property, so yeah. he wasn't very attached to it. So um, yeah, it was just a very interesting setup and it was very intimidating with the uh, uh, crotchety old man on the other end of the phone <laughs> is probably the easiest way. So grumpier old men was, you know, kind of real life. Uh, but yeah. Lesson learned, check it twice, right? Make sure when you're listing a property, you got like all of your, your, you know, T's crossed and I's dotted and you know exactly what's in the property. Don't just guess or assume. So yeah, we've seen other agents do that a lot and it usually goes to our benefit when we're representing a buyer, right? When that happens. So yeah, as far as listing them wrong, I think the classic in Colorado is to list mountain view views where it's like <laughs> if you look between these two trees and have perfect in the vision, winter there's the these two days of one of year. them yeah. like maybe you'll see it so on the winter solstice yeah. yeah there's a lot of those with mountain views where agents list that one of the worst ones i've seen was a house that was listed as three beds and we go into the house and it's not a big house so, you know not a lot of square footage and i'm like all right there's definitely only two beds here are they like claiming you're going to put a bed in the living room so i'm kind of confused we go around the back of the property and there's a shed and i'm like okay let me show the client the shed 
I open up a shed which is completely built wrong, DIW doing it wrong. Uh, I open it up. It's a gravel floor that has water seeping into it as we're viewing it. And they've placed an air mattress on top of the gravel and they've plugged in a space heater. And they are claiming that this is their third bedroom, this gravel shed that's not enclosed from the elements with a bed in it. So nice. that was probably the weirdest just like listing. So when did your clients wrong. move in? Yeah. How soon? Yeah, they loved it right after. <laughs> yeah. Did the water bed come with purchase? Yeah, yeah. I, I think with if enough water comes in, having the air mattress, oh, yeah. you, know, you yeah. can float once yeah. the water comes in and then you'll be all right. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. I, I had a similar one early on. It was probably my, you know, less than my first half dozen deals. And the seller, turns out, is the owner. And she's affiliated. And then there's that site we look up to learn about the other agent, you know, their volume and average price point. This was her first deal. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot to go on, but in the end, it's actually great for my client who was buying, because she said yes to just about anything we asked. Hmm. Anyway, it's a reason. Try to find someone who's got a few more laps around the, <laughs> the track. No doubt. Yeah, I I forgot about this, but I actually do hmm. have an Ooh. agent blacklist oh. on my on my phone on my notes, <laughs> and I like if I have a horrible experience with working with an agent. I will write them down on this blacklist, and if I, if I, I guess if I have to work with them again, I will. But those are people that I just want to avoid if but I have you'll competing be offers. Now. Yeah. yeah, and I'll, I'll remember and yeah. know, like, oh, it was that person. <laughs> so, I, um, yeah, no, just I had one that was like I called her the expeditiously expeditious due diligence monster, <laughs> and. It was insane. Like the fact checking and like, I, I mean, the, the homework, uh, she made everything 20 times harder than it needed to be. Right. And, and just asked for this and this and this and this and this and this. And it just not normal things that you would ask for in a real estate transaction. So those are the things that drive me nuts when it's just like so beyond like what is simple. Cause we, we represent our clients and we want our clients to be safe and protected through the transaction. But at the same time, like we are, we are also there to make, make Make a deal and, and bring bring two parties together and create a win win, right? And some agents just don't see it that way. They see it as like a uh, I've got to win and you've got to lose sort of thing. And it's that's not how real estate deals mm -hmm. should be, right? It should be a win win where both parties are are happy and they feel well represented, you know. And and so I've had a couple of those that are just interesting situations for sure. Mm -hmm. I've I've uh, you know going on the MLS to find properties to show uh, buyers. I'm sure you guys have come across this, so I can't, you know, name a specific person, but I would, I would think this is a, a broker issue. Um, when you go through the pictures and it is just dirty, and like piles of laundry, and the bathroom sinks covered in toothbrushes and toothpaste and toilet paper, and like every picture was like, oh my gosh, this is what it looks like at its best. You know, for your, your realtor came in and took these pictures, Yeah. you know, like, I don't know how anybody would feel comfortable showing anything like that, yeah. but oh, I just kind of skipped those. It's like, who? Yeah. Well, and granted, like some agents are actually good agents that just work with very challenging clients right. at I times. Think, right. Yeah. So sometimes it's, sometimes it's on the agent for just being very neglectful, but other times mm -hmm. it's like they've told them yeah. over and over and <laughs> the client just doesn't listen. So yeah. I, I like to have a little mercy there too, but yeah. I mean, I, I walked through one house with a client who there was a dead dog in the basement and like on a, on the dog bed. And this house had been like left. Nobody had checked on, up on oh. it for years. So in my mind, that's like neglectful oh. and super sad, right? Like we, we saw it and I immediately called and said, Hey, like you've got to go got to come over here um it was it was really a sad thing with you? yeah i did oh, walking through the house yeah and um we and it looked like i mean it had just been abandoned completely so i mean more of a knock on the owners i think than than the agent for sure right, but right. it was it was pretty sad um so you see some crazy things yeah, in, in totally. real estate for sure yeah. <laughs> i uh had an agent who i'll call max bs 
who, uh, when I <laughs> was dealing with this I agent, love the nickname firstly, the Max's pictures, he managed to get his knee into every picture he took on his iPhone, which was an interesting feature that every picture of the house had his knees in it or him in the mirror. I thought that was funny. But afterwards, we go and I immediately notice there's something structural going on with this property. Yeah. And so I call him and he goes, oh, yeah, I'm at, I totally sent it to all the agents. I must have just forgot to disclose that to you specifically. Let me send that over to you. Yeah. And he sends me an inspection report that's been cropped just to this area that says, like, oh, the brick needs cosmetic repair. <laughs> I got the full inspection report directly above that and directly below that is like structural issues, structural engineer recommended, all of this stuff. Oh my goodness. And I remember that. Yeah. And the funniest part to me was we had a structural engineer go out there and, you know, analyze the situation, knew exactly what was going on. And so I go to Max and uh, he came back after reviewing the structural engineer's work and said, okay, well, um, my sellers don't feel like it's a problem, which is hilarious to me because it's like, I'm sure they don't feel like having a structural issue, <laughs> but the structural engineer already said you have one. Yeah. So I don't think how you feel about it is going to reverse it right now. So happy ending. I got a really great concession for my buyer um, and much more than the structural engineer said it would take to worst case scenario fix it. So oh, nice. yeah. ended happily, oh, wow. ended well for my buyer. But uh, yeah, if I see Max again, I'm probably <laughs> okay. gonna not want to work with him as much. The or sellers were just giving the you, they're following the instruction from their elementary school teacher, giving you yeah. an yeah. iMessage of how yeah. they Yeah, That's <laughs> right. Totally normal. <laughs> you know, I had one other story where I had an a agent that, you know, prior to any buyer showing that we're going through, we're trying to call the agents and get the information and get the story of the property. And this one didn't return calls, re replied with a text message saying, hey, just, you know, go, go and, you know, tell me what you think. So it was a property that was uh, kind of like a wholesale deal. So it was, you know, needed work. Um, it was definitely a rehab thing. So, and said it wouldn't qualify for FHA. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll go take a look. So I go there and we're walking through and the kitchen is completely demolished. Like it's just removed and it's sitting out in the back porch. Like, okay, that's interesting. So we're walking around through the rest of the house and we get into the basement and there's white primer on all of the joists in the subfloor underneath the kitchen. I'm like, okay, they had like a massive water leak and it was mold and they cleaned it up and trying to get it text and get information from the agent and he wasn't responding. So I'm like, okay. So uh, as there's like six different parties looking at this house at the, all at the same time and people are like what the, come with their ladders and they're looking at everything and it was like a contractor special right so i went and talked to the neighbor who just happened to be out on his patio and uh his name was howard and i chatted with him and he kind of told me a little bit more of the story which um was kind of interesting so it turns out uh the, mom, the parents that owned the place, they had their son living with them. They moved out to the retirement place. I think they went down to Florida and their son stayed in the home. Mm. Well, their son was kind of a loner and a recluse and kind of hid in the home and kind of wasn't very social with everything. Well, um, eventually the mail started piling up and uh, someone called for a welfare check. Turns out he uh, had passed away in the kitchen. So all of the kitchen being ripped out and the floor being painted and all of that was uh, because of the decomposing body oh, that happened man. in there. And uh, yeah, we, we decided to pass on writing an offer on that home. Yeah. And, uh, at Juju, we decided, yeah. So, Isn't that but, supposed uh, to be disclosed? Or? No, so yeah, fun fact, uh, psychological okay. uh, items like that are not, you don't have to disclose them in Colorado. So you can do your own due diligence and try to find out, right? Hey. With police records or with, you know, research on the internet, yeah. stuff like that. But, but yeah, it oh, wow. doesn't have to be disclosed. I would want to know that. Other states it does, but yeah. here it doesn't. Some people that might be like, Ooh, you know, they're in like, yeah. there's a goat, you know, totally. Some people would totally want to buy that. You guys watch NCIS. Yeah. You know the story I'm talking about? No. Denozo moved into some apartment years and years ago because there was a death, a decomposing body or something like that. No, no, no. Uh -uh. keep going. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> Lay it all out. <laughs> Fast forward ten years, that another member of the team moves in with his wife. He knows, doesn't tell her. Of course, she finds oh, out. Man, uh, yeah, great comment. <laughs> yes. Uh. <laughs> so on that note, this is not funny. So um, I can't have a 
bad situation without talking about um, sometimes agents are just really dishonest. And in my case, the seller was even more dishonest, so dishonest that his previous uh, agent quit, which we found out much later. Mm -hmm. But through the uh, submitting an offer, a made-up offer, which we never can 100% prove, mm -hmm. but later, $45,000 in concessions later, like, why didn't you just sell it to your buddy who was paying you? <laughs> And it's miserable. They're close friends of mine in this case we were working with. And we just like tightened up and we muscled through it. And in the end, they're happy as a lark, but miserable every step of the way. Yeah. Every yeah. time they open that's, their mouth. That's too bad. Well, and, and we could tell you experience after experience that are great experiences yeah. with other agents we've worked with on the other side. They're so professional and awesome, but this is our show, so we can say whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we're telling you the bad experiences. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully you found it interesting to hear of some of these things that do happen in, in the real estate industry sometimes, and even more of a reason to get great representation. We're not perfect. We don't claim to be, but we feel like we represent people very well. We're honest, um, believe in what we do. So. Give us a call if we can help you and your needs. And thanks for listening today. We'll catch you on the next one. So if you have enjoyed what you're listening to and you'd like to, to hear more, make sure to press that subscribe button so that you can not miss out on any more episodes that are coming up. And also check out all of our contact information is below. You can see us at, at the uh, dreamsmithteam.com. Um, to, to look up more information about our team and our history and, and all the members of our team and, um, and see contact information that, that you can reach us if you have any real estate needs. See you next time. <laughs>